welcome uh, today is day 16 of the 40 day fast and it's uh, Tuesday January 17 of 2012 so far you know 16 days into the fast 24 days to go uh, I told you like I, I started the fast just water but because I also work 40 hours a, a week and I walk my son to school an hour and a half or two hours every day and usually I walk also more on Saturdays and about the same amount on Sunday um, yesterday because it was a holiday I did not walk but this uh, morning I did my I uh, started walking again and I walked my son to school early this morning and I came back here and uh, today I'm trying a different camera that just came in the mail it's a high definition mini it's called a mini uh, 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 Mino HD by Flip so it's got it for $40 it was on sale so finally arrived today and so I'm trying it out to see how things work out you know and um, so today we're going to do the message uh, with this camera and uh, in this fast like I said since day 11 uh, the fast that I had to switch that night uh, to grape juice grape juice from real grapes especially the darker the grape the better and if the grape has seeds it's the better you put it not in a juicer but you put them in a blender and you let it blend for a while with all the seeds in it and then when you're juicing it down take you a while you know running it through your mouth so it gets all your saliva in it and that helps to digest better in your intestines so that's what I've been using and doing and since then and uh, it's great I'm being able to sustain my energy I've been able to do everything and be able to work and work getting more able to concentrate on the work that I do it's kind of interesting how you know I guess toxins coming out of your body still you know because like I said there's some you know I'm 147 right now uh, I'm five foot seven for uh, my height I should be between 121 and 153 pounds so I'm right there what is called normal weight category kind of person so thank God for that but we're going to continue with the theme today you know on uh, Jesus your Jesus sucks and my Jesus rules and and I and I emphasize have you noticed a lot if you've been watching this I emphasize the meaning of words because that's where we look we, that's where we get lost we change the meaning of words you know and then we think something else is happening but that's not what is happening okay so your Jesus sucks means to suck is to take away to devour to remove something from somewhere you know just to eat it away and uh, to rule I'm using that for our modern terminology of you know he rules he's in control he's got it together you know and rule in the sense of being a ruler Jesus to me is the ruler of the entire universe the ruler of every atom in the universe he is the word the agent by which God spoke everything into existence and just like a pixel in the screen of a monitor or eventually when the monitors will become holographic images all those images, all those hollow images at all, are controlled by the word that is found in the hardware. And so every atom in creation is controlled by the word of God, which is his son, Jesus Christ, who is in the very bosom of the Father, in whom he delights. And he says, this is my beloved son, because he knows how to express exactly the way I am. So we were supposed to listen to him. You know, so we, we are to get into the mindset of anybody who is supposed to listen to him. Uh, and so, in order to get to know anybody, I'm going to interject this portion. I wasn't planning, but I'm going to say it right now. In order to get to know anybody, you can see somebody externally. But to know anybody externally, you just know my face. You know, I know my features and all that. Externally, the skin only shows about 95, about 5 to 7% of what we are. Everything else that is inside of us is revealed by knowledge. We get to find out how the brain functions, not because we open it up and we want to see it with our eyes. We're not going to learn it that way. We have to study about it. And so words reveal to us the inners of our, even of our own physical body. So, you know, everything in the universe, most of it, the external part, the, the surface is very little. It's what's inside, you know, that really is holding everything and making everything run, you know. And so we have the, we are accustomed to say that if I have looked at something, I have seen it, I think I know it. No. 
To know something, you know exactly how it works inside. That's when you know something. So you cannot claim that you have knowledge on something that you only know about 5% of it. You know, in order to get to know something deep inside how, how it is, you got to get into the words and the knowledge that has exposed it to tell you exactly how it's made and all, how it all functions together. It's even the same to get to know people. You can see how people look, but if you, unless you spend time with the words communicating, words with one another and talking to each other, you know, like uh, most of you do on Facebook and places like this, uh, so, uh, social networks, and even there, you know, people are not necessarily being truthful because I like open, open face conversations. But uh, you have to spend time with somebody's words. You got to listen to their ambitions, their desires, their fears. You know what they've done in the past, what they're planning to do. Once you know a little bit about all of that, then you can say, I know that person. I know his dreams. I know his goals. You know, but if you haven't heard, so the only way you can get to know the deep, the deeper uh, part of a person is by the way he gives you words. That's why Jesus and God gave us words. He's revealing himself. It's only through words that you can get to know somebody. Deeper than with the eyesight or by, you know, or by smelling it or anything. Only through the words that you can get to know how a person thinks and how a person is and how he feels and how he does. That's why he left to the inheritance of words. So we can come to the mindset that he has. Yeah, you need to understand, it's very simple because that applies to everything, you know. Like again, the revelations that God has given me is to understand how He rules as the Word, how the rules, the Word has precedence over everything because the Word reveals more to us through the eyes of our understanding, you know, how things work inside of an item without having to open it. And so you get to know the heart and the feelings of what's deep inside the soul of a person when they open up to you and they reveal your soul to you. Then you can say, I know that person, you know, I'm intimate with their knowledge of who they are, you know, that can, you can really employ that word because the word know, you know, in the Bible means intimacy, you're very familiar, very close to somebody, you know them very well, you know, you, you anticipate how they will react to this, how they will feel about this, so once you have spent time with words, that's how you get to know somebody, that's why a word was given to us, the Bible was given to us so we can get to the mindset of God, and we can inherit his mind, his heart, mind and heart and mind and once we have a heart and mind our choices are going to be the choices that he will like that he will do you know the saying that what would jesus do get to know his heart and mind and you will know what he's going to do you know so the only but getting into the word and a book the bible wasn't written in a, in a span of uh, 1600 years i believe if i'm not wrong you know with all those books in there for you to just spend a couple of hours, a couple of minutes just reading a verse and say that you're saved and you trusted in, in Christ, and yet you don't read anything, you don't listen to Him, you don't de delve into the words like the Puritans. Puritans, you choose to not fall asleep. They, they, they thought if they slept more than 12 hours a day, you know, uh, no, I'm sorry, they, they felt that if they spent about three hours or, or, or more sleeping, you know, that was too much. They, they, especially the pastors, they delve into the scriptures. And they wanted to know the heart of God. Uh, so, but enough of that for now. Let me move on to the temptations of Christ right now. We're talking about the third temptation right now. Uh, the ways in the order of Matthew. And uh, the, the first temptation had to do, you know, with the provisions of the flesh. Turning the stone into bread. You know, you are the, have the power of God. You are the son of God. You are the child of God. You are so-called Christian because that's what you the child of God. Use the power of God to turn the stone into bed. Make sure that the provisions of the flesh are provided. Second, you know, if you are the son of God, let's test the promises of protection. He, he has written, cast yourself down from this high temple, took it to a high temple, because it's, it is written, you know, he shall send his, uh, he has uh, given charge to his angels, you know, that they will carry you up so you will not dash your feet against the stone. So let's try that protection on the flesh. Let's see if you you know, that's an, a guarantee there. You know, they see that uh, manifest itself. And then we go into the third temptation in which he took him to the top of a mountain on a moment in time and showed him the kingdoms of the world in all time with all this glory and all their accomplishments. And then he said, you know, all this has been given to me and I can give it to anybody I want. You know, and I explained yesterday what the mindset of him is, you know. Uh, the mindset of the ignorant, the things that that have the constantly things that are the things in the world and by having the proximity to those things by purchasing them and having them as 
and having them as your own that you can develop greatness and be famous, you know. So they think that things make you be like God. That's how the devil became a devil, with that ignorant thought, that's foolish thought. You know, having inventions does not make you an inventor. And having things created does not make you a creator. The invention does not make the inventor. The creation does not make the creator. The creator makes the creation. The inventor makes the invention. You know, it's like believing like a child can give birth to his own father. Because they want all these things that have come out of, uh, you know, and then this thing that, that are out there, they want them to take care of them and give them the greatness and comfort and everything. That's, that's impossible. It's a crazy idea. The way, that's the same idea that the, that the devil was suggesting there. You know, and so this portion here is for the production. You know, all the production that is in the world. Make sure that all the provisions, the first temptation, are for the flesh. Make sure that all the protections, all the warranties for protection are for the flesh, the force of the flesh. And third, make sure that all the productions are made available for the flesh to enjoy. So this is only a consumer mindset. Because once you don't have any knowledge with you, and you don't have any order of words in you, you cannot repair anything, you cannot maintain anything. You just got to sit there and then suck the benefit out of your TV, suck the benefit out of your, you know, your PS3 uh, game, game, you know, uh, PlayStation. Just suck the benefit out of it until, you know, there's no more benefit for it to give you. Until it stops functioning before your eyes, and then after it stops functioning, it's like, how can you give me another one? Because you don't know any better. You don't know how to fix it, you don't know how to repair it. You don't know even how to, you know, take an, an item like this and make it even better. You have no idea. You're just so far away from that, you know. So that's the inheritance of the ignorant. The inheritance of the one that does not love instruction is to make sure that everything he grabs onto, he can only suck the benefit of it. He cannot put any benefit. He cannot make it function. So they will only suck on the, all the emotions of people, suck all the benefit of materials, and suck all the, be the benefit that places provide you. You know, you will be a consumer. You know, like a flame of fire, just sucking the, thing, the good things out of people and leaving it without working and then moving on to something else to suck the life out of. Out of. So that's what the mindset of Satan. He is the founder of it. And so as a founder of it, he told Jesus, you keep your name as Jesus Christ, and I'll appoint you my CEO of this mindset, and if you bow down and worship me, you know, he says, you know, when you worship somebody, that means that person is your master, that person is above you. And then the answer that Jesus gave yesterday, get thou behind me, Satan. He says, get thou behind me, that means line up with me. That's not the way things are. It is written. You know, there's the Lord only, you shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. You're only going to go bow down to the Lord your God. Now, remember in the book of Leviticus, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the Bible, uh, when God was giving the inheritance to all the tribes of Israel, he said that the inheritance of the Levites was the Lord. Now that means the five books that were given to them, he called them the Lord, the ruler. That was their inheritance. They were supposed to be the technicians of the scripture. They were supposed to study deep, deeply, understanding, dividing the word of God rightly and teaching it right to the people. That was their inheritance. Okay, so the Lord, the Word, was their inheritance. And that's the case. That's a law. If you're going to become an expert in this world, going to school, but basically what that means is when you go to school, you go to a school to finally be mastered by the Word. You don't master any Word. The Word masters you. Let's get that straight. That's how it is. The word is written a certain way, the manuals are written a certain way, and you pay attention to the manual. You listen attentively. And then when that manual has instructed your heart and your soul and your mind, you become useful to society. So only when you bow down and your head bows down and says, yes, this knowledge is good for me, this knowledge is what make, will make things happen in the world, then you go and do things in the world. Now, the only thing that you may feel like you're a master is of the items that you are an expert in. If you're an expert in computers, you may feel like you're the master of computers. But it's not that you're the master of computers. No, the master, the word, has come and dwell in you, and now that master that is sitting in you, in your mind, as, as his throne, now he's ruling you and telling you how to work with that because he instructed you and you follow his instructions. So you never master the word. The word always masters you. So, but that's the only slavery we all enjoy. Because, you know, people love to go 
to school because they know that the, whatever uh, expertise they acquire will enable them to make a quote unquote good living in this world. So for that reason, they're motivated to go and they're continuing there. But they don't want to admit that what has happened whenever you go to school is to become the best, the best slave of knowledge that you can be. Because you are very careful to study everything, spend hours acquiring knowledge. And even with the powers of observation that God gives you, you're able to develop some conclusion. But the knowledge has to be given to you. And then when you, once that knowledge masters you, because you cannot master the knowledge. The knowledge is already set. You can only bow down to it and say, so be it. You know, it will be done. As you have said, your will will be done. So that's how it's set up. So the devil suggesting otherwise was a crazy thought. So that was basically it. So I want to speak some more about that uh, tomorrow. We'll continue with this theme on the, on the third time session. There are different other applications that we can get out of this. But that's how the rule is. So make sure that you, Jesus, the meaning of Jesus means he saves, he restores, he makes complete. Doesn't mean something else. Like he sucks, he takes away, he removes life. The meaning of Jesus had to remain like he rules. He controls all things that are made. So that's why I ask you when I, you know, during these uh, sessions here, uh, is, your reason, is, your, is your Jesus that you believe in the one that teaches you to suck the, the benefits out of life? Or is the Jesus, the Jesus that you believe in the Jesus that I believe in, the one that rules over all creation?